Now, if there's one injury to the biceps muscle that we absolutely cannot miss in practice, it's a distal biceps tendon rupture. If you're ready to find out more about this injury, let's dive in. Hey guys, Khalid here. Welcome back to Clinical Physio. So let's check out this injury starting with our 3D anatomy model. So the biceps brachii muscle. Now the reason it's called the biceps is because it has two heads. At its proximal or upper attachment, we have both a long head and a short head. These two heads join together to create the muscle belly for the biceps, and then this belly converges into one single tendon at the distal end, which is where the distal biceps tendon inserts into the radial tuberosity of the radius. As we can see, this is a bony prominence or protuberance that the muscle attaches to. However, the tendon itself runs over the cubital fossa of the elbow. That's this little elbow crease that we have in the front here. Now, this is a really good place to be able to palpate this tendon, and we're going to show you how to do that later. But if you can't palpate the tendon in that area, it's a clear sign that your patient may have a distal biceps tendon rupture. So that's the anatomy. Next, who gets this condition and how does it happen in practice? Well, we're commonly seeing that it's more prevalent in males than females. And in particular, we're looking at the 40 to 60 year old age bracket. This is the age where our tendons start to become a bit more degenerative, but also that individuals are involving themselves in lots of lifting and arm activity that may lead to the injury. Now, speaking of which, we do tend to find that it is a traumatic event that can lead to this injury. We don't tend to find that it happens out of the blue. Now, a common story that you may hear is involving lifting procedures, particularly when someone's holding something or trying to lift something with their elbows at a 90 degree angle, and then something goes wrong. The object moves or it slips, which means that they then have to suddenly eccentrically load to catch that piece of equipment, which leads to that lengthening of the distal biceps tendon under load, which can be what leads to the rupture. So what else might we be listening out for in our patient's history? Well, we might hear them report either a pop sensation or a pop sound when they actually had that trauma. And they may even report a bruising where blood is collected at the cubital fossa or the distal humerus around the time of the trauma. And we might also listen for different risk factors that may have pointed us towards a patient who is more susceptible to a tendon rupture. Those may include those with a long history of smoking and or a history of anabolic steroids use. And that's because long history of smoking and the anabolic steroids can each cause a weakening or a deterioration in tendons over time. So we certainly want to listen to that when we're thinking about a potential rupture. So what might we be looking for in the objective examination? Well, the patient may well report a weakness and demonstrate that weakness with resisted elbow flexion and supination. So we'll look at those two resisted tests to see if it is much weaker than the other side. And a really good test that we can use is hook test. So the hook test relates to the fact that as we saw earlier in the anatomy, we should be able to palpate that distal biceps tendon here in the cubital fossa at the front of the elbow. So the way in which we do hook test is we ask our patient to flex their elbow to 90 degrees with full supination of the forearm. And then we ask them to abduct their shoulder to this 90 degree position. And we ask them to hold it there. As the examiner, we then should be able to try and hook our finger around the distal biceps tendon. It should be quite easy to find in that cubital fossa. And if you find that there's nothing to hook over, it could well be because that tendon's ruptured. So a couple of other tests you can use. The first is the bicep squeeze test. This is a really good test and it's something that you can easily do to yourself whilst you're watching this video. So I'd like you to flex your elbow to about 60 to 80 degrees and hold your arm in the air in that position. 
With your other hand, I'd like you to squeeze the muscle belly of the biceps muscle. And if you keep an eye on your forearm, you should find that when you squeeze that muscle belly, it moves in a small, subtle direction of supination. That's what should happen if the tendon's intact. So if you do this on your patient and you find that there's no movement into supination, that could be because that tendon's ruptured. Now, of course, the other sign, which is an observation sign, is reverse Popeye sign. Now, the idea here is that because the distal biceps tendon is ruptured, the muscle belly may well move a little bit more proximally or superiorly because it's lost its distal anchor at the radial tuberosity. So if you look at your patient's arms and you see that on their injured arm, that muscle belly is sitting a little bit higher than it is on the other side, that could be an indication of reverse Popeye sign. Okay, great. So how are these injuries managed in practice? Well, the first thing that I always do if I suspect that my patient has had a distal biceps tendon rupture is to refer the patient to orthopedics. Now, it's not my decision as to whether they have surgery or not, but I do know from working with orthopedic surgeons in the past that if this injury is presented, if they are going to operate, they want to operate on the patient relatively quickly, definitely within the first six weeks. And that's because if it's left too long after that, it could be that the tendon retracts too far up, which makes it more difficult to reinsert to that radial tuberosity. So think, if you see the rupture, think about referring on. However, in some patients, perhaps in the very elderly, or perhaps those where the surgeon has looked at it and thought, I don't think I can repair this, the answer may well be conservative management with physiotherapy and rehab. So in this situation, our first key principle is to try and help the patient get as much range of movement back as possible. So we might simply start with some passive range of movement exercises, including passive supination, passive pronation, passive flexion and extension of the elbow. And then, of course, we can gradually progress these all to active movements as well. And I tend to give these out with a relatively high number of reps, perhaps towards 15 to 20 repetitions across two to three sets. Now, one thing we do know is that if our patient has ruptured their distal biceps tendon, we would expect around about a 10 to 20% loss in active elbow flexion and up to a 40 to 47% loss in active forearm supination. So it's important to educate your patient on these ideas before you start those range of movement exercises so you can help with their expectations. And then of course, strengthening will also be important. But remember, we've now lost that distal attachment to the biceps brachii muscle. So even if we do some simple things like some biceps curls, it's going to be muscles like brachialis and brachioradialis, which are going to get stronger. Unfortunately, these muscles are not quite as strong as the biceps brachii itself. So it's really important to do, but again, expectations for the patient, they may well not be as strong as they were previously. So guys, I really hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please support us by smashing that like button and subscribe to our channel for all of our best updates. And you can find more from us on our Instagram account at Clinical Physio and on our website, clinicalphysio.com. My name's Khalid. Thank you so much for watching. See you soon here on Clinical Physio.